Okay, so I'm starting to get pretty confused here. <laughs> um, so this is my 12 volt power supply that I did a video on um, a couple weeks ago. And this is the fuse out of it, which I blew last night. And <clears throat> when it blew, I had a Dacta Control Lab and two NXTs with the um, rechargeable battery, the version one, I think, battery. Um, and I plugged up the third NXT, and um, that's when I noticed that uh, I wasn't getting power anymore. Or it, it took me a, a couple, I'm not sure how long it took me to notice, but anyways, didn't have power anymore. Um, this light is actually 110 volts, so that wouldn't tell me if the fuse was blown. Um, so I've dropped in a, um, a fuse holder so I can have a fuse there. This transformer, I've got the case to it. I just, well, I threw it back in a box, but um, it's rated for 2,000 milliamps. Oddly enough, this fuse is 5 amps. <laughs> um, so it blew. Uh, it could have been maybe a short, because I remember I had issues getting this to plug in, and I like kind of shoved it, and um, maybe that's what blew it. Maybe I had some kind of short. Um, still trying to figure that out so <clears throat> in my testing <laughs> I'm finally using these banana jacks um, as an input um, since there is no fuse it's not going through the transformer this is just a breakout panel at this point where voltage comes in through here and then it goes to each barrel jack um, so I'm using my other power supply to just do some testing and of course, I mean, I, I knew these weren't the most accurate things in the world, <laughs> but right now it's just three NXT batteries, uh, and the RCX is on there, but they're all idle at the, at the moment. Uh, I'm not really sure the state of the batteries, how to tell if they're charging. I mean, this one doesn't have a red light. This one does. I guess that's when it's charging is when the red light's on. Um, and the red light's on there. So, <clears throat> I'm either getting 0 0.75 amps or 0 0.45, or neither, <laughs> probably neither. Um, and they don't really seem to track together. And, and yes, they are in series through this and through here. But I tried it separately, and they read about the same. Um, so I don't think it matters that there's two in series. Um, but you can kind of watch, so I've got, oh, this is cool. <laughs> so David Cooties mentioned that you can use a touch sensor on two different RCXs. And that kind of got my brain thinking a little bit. <laughs> so there is a touch sensor here that's always pressed. And then I'm using the um, white electric plates to split it out. And then I'm using pole reversers. So you can see up here, you'll see them click on. So that's one, two, three. Um, I don't know, it was just kind of fun. <laughs> uh, so I just got this configured or programmed. Um, so when that one's, it's just each switch goes to a motor. Um, so we can watch, we're at 0 0.723-ish and 0.44. <clears throat> That's one geared motor, two geared motors, and then an uh, ungeared motor. Um, I guess I just need something more accurate to really be able to tell um, how much power these are using. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I blew that fuse, and I guess it must have been a short, because I don't think I would have pulled enough to do it. What I might do is... Um, actually use this in place of the fuse and put it on um, amps AC and uh, and see how that works because I, that, I guess that would tell me um, and just hopefully I don't get some kind of short in the meantime um, so we got the art this is one of two that have a working screen um, and one of them I thought I had tested and I thought it was bad so it could just be like loose or something uh, I hate those things. Um, so here I've just got set up. 
you can tell that middle one is pretty darn loud and that's these are the ones i would keep the loud ones and then the like quiet nice and quiet smooth running ones like that's good that would the, those would be the ones i would sell on Bricklink and ebay i always took the the seconds and sold sold the best of the best um that's just how i did things um so this is with one motor running two motors running probably can't hear me anymore and three So it definitely does change um, as the motors are run, but I don't know. I mean, maybe when it's plugged in, I'm wondering if any power is coming from the battery, but I don't think it'd be in tandem where it's pulling from the battery and the AC, or in this case, it's this is actually a DC uh, 12 volts being run to all of this. Um, I'm just really confused. Um, and um, I guess I'll, I might just put this thing back together with a, I guess a five amp fuse. It sounds like way too much. Um, and I've also been kind of looking on eBay to see, um, if I can find another transformer or something, maybe a little bigger. I've seen some that are like five amps. Um, so I may try that and see if, uh, see if that does any better. So I don't know. Um, if you have any advice. <laughs> Feel free to drop it in the comments because I'm um, still trying to figure out the best way to do this. Um, I liked using an AC transformer just because it felt authentic because that's what the Lego transformers usually were, were 12 volts AC. Um, and the thought of like inside the RCX or any of these, it's going to have four diodes rectifying the voltage. And if you're using DC, it's running all that current through two diodes. And you got two diodes just kind of sitting there doing nothing. And uh, I think they should share the load. <laughs> so I kind of want to do AC. Um, so I guess I'll, uh, I'll try to swap the amp meter in in place of the fuse and try to mess around with the AC um, transformer and see how that does when I start hooking more and more things to it. So that's about it. Um, like again, if you have suggestions, drop them below. I might end up building version two of my power supply and maybe get a um, maybe an analog uh, amp and meter on the front. That'd be kind of cool. But anyways, all right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>